Thank you very much for having me. I'm honored to be here with you all at LEAP. So this is actually my fourth visit in the last two months to the kingdom. And that's saying something because I live in San Francisco. So this is actually my new 18-hour commute. My wife loves it. Uh, and I've been going back and forth quite a bit. But I've been very blessed to learn about the people and the culture and I've really grown to love it. And also, I've grown to really believe that Saudi Arabia can be a global leader in AI and intelligence. But what is intelligence? Is a rock intelligent? What about a flower? What about a virus? Well, we thought a lot about this question of what is intelligence, and ultimately, we define intelligence as the ability to acquire knowledge from experience for future decision-making. The ability to acquire knowledge from experience for future decision-making. And let's think about that with some examples. So take this scorpion. Looks like it's had a bad day. Looks kind of angry, ready to strike. Is it learning? every day from its experience? Is it using it to make better decisions? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. But think about a sand cat. Now, it's very cute, but it's also a predator. And it learns. It may go hungry on one hunt and think about, OK, what could I do differently next time to make sure that I'm able to eat? So I think, yeah, I think the sand cat actually is learning from its experience. What about a human boy? Think about this boy hanging on this rock here. If he falls and skins his knee, is he going to be more careful next time? Is he going to learn and to make sure that that doesn't happen again? What about if he burns his hand on the stove? Yeah, I think the boy probably does learn from his experiences. But what about an adult? What about a human adult? What about you. Are you learning every day from your experience and applying that to make better decisions? Well, this boy is actually me. This is me when I was five or six years old, and I'm happy to say I actually didn't fall off that rock, but I have learned a lot of lessons over the years. And I've learned to apply those lessons, that experience, to my life. And I've been very blessed to have a lot of experience throughout my life. And like many of you, I've had uh, my fair share of, of success and learnings along the way. And I actually, I grew up in a small town in Northern California. And the people that you see in the top picture there are two of my best friends throughout all of my life, high school, college. I went to law school in Boston. And this is actually me at one of my best friend's weddings. And I learned from all the experiences that we had together. And ultimately, that brought me after law school to join a large law firm. And then I ended up seeing a lot of companies that I represented, founders, starting these amazing companies and growing them from zero to IPO and beyond. And I watched that movie enough times that I decided, I've watched that movie enough. I want to be part of the movie. And so I took a, a huge risk. I actually, uh, my wife and I were having um, twins. She was six months pregnant. And I left my very stable law firm job, and I went to an early stage startup. I went to a company called App Dynamics, And I joined around 100 employees. And it was everybody in one room in San Francisco. And people thought I was absolutely crazy. It didn't help that two weeks in, we got a lawsuit from a much larger competitor, and it looked like that might be the end of our, our startup. But we learned through a lot of ups and downs, trials and tribulations, that if you focus on adding value for, all, for everybody, for the world, giving the world, giving the market something that it doesn't already have, that it needs, you can not only survive, but you can thrive. And over the years, we went from that early stage startup that almost died to getting the company ready to go public. And in 2017, we were done with the roadshow. We had completed 
um, uh, the roadshow and we're 100x oversubscribed. And then two days before our IPO, Cisco came in and they bought us for $3.7 billion. And I learned from that experience and I brought that to my current role as the CEO of Data Robot. And I feel very fortunate for all of the experiences I've had. And I think that I just have a ton of gratitude for my mentors, for my parents, for my teachers. But one thing I'm really grateful for is language. Language, because humans are actually unique among all animals in the sense that we can pass knowledge from generation to generation through language. And if you think about math, math is just an extension of language. It's actually the universal language. And many Americans don't know that the numbers that we use today are actually derived from the Arabic numerals that the mathematicians used here and that you know, later paved the way for Newton and Einstein and everybody who followed. In our digital world today, it's really just math, ones and zeros. And the amount of experience, the amount of data that's being created has absolutely exploded. From wearables to blockchain to cryptocurrency to augmented reality, so much data is being collected and it's overwhelming for humans alone. And if you think about what data is, really, it's just experience. It's our collective experience. So let me ask you a question. Are you using that experience in your company, in your organization, for your decision making to create value? Well, all of this data, this overwhelming amount of data, created the need for AI. But as many companies tried to adopt this technology, and get value and make better decisions, they struggled. And in fact, 85% of AI projects never make it off the ground. They fail entirely. And I call that experimental AI. Experimental AI where you may have people working on AI projects, they may be coding models, but those models never ultimately make it into production. They never actually create value. They never actually inform the decisions that are being made in all of the different workflows and decision processes across the business. And so at Data Robot, we've been focused maniacally on not experimental AI, but on applied AI for the last decade. And the original idea behind the company back when it started in Boston in 2012 was that we needed to automate the processes behind machine learning. And we actually pioneered the category of AutoML. And then we realized that on this value journey, this journey to create value from AI, applied AI, that was not sufficient. It was absolutely necessary, but it wasn't enough. And so we needed to be able to get models deployed in production, monitored, managed, optimized, and updated constantly as data is changing. And we actually acquired the company that created ML Ops. And when you combine AutoML with MLOps, you get continuous AI, a system for always updating machine learning models as data is changing. But that too wasn't enough. And so we decided to go end to end. We added data preparation and feature engineering. And then we took a huge leap forward with the realization that machine intelligence is so important but no person, no data scientist, nobody understands your business or your problems or your key decisions like you do. And so we combined the idea of machine intelligence with the idea of human intelligence, with augmented intelligence, decision intelligence, and the ability to create a unified structure between data science and the business. And then, we took it last year, the next step, to AI Cloud, which is adding on all of that innovation over the last decade, the ability to appeal to all users across the enterprise, 
to have a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, flexible architecture to code or automate, and also to embrace all models, regardless of how they were built or where they reside. And we've been very fortunate, and I feel very grateful for all of the experience that we've gained over that decade on that value journey. And today, we work with many of the Global 2000. We work with seven of the top 10 banks. We work with many of the top manufacturers and retailers and insurance companies all across the world. And we've raised over a billion dollars and we've poured that into our platform. We have 1.5 million engineering hours spent just on our platform. And, and the interesting thing about DataRobot is, you know, a lot of people in the market, companies in the market, they focus on lots of different things. We only do AI. So this is all just going to that end-to-end -end value journey for AI. And we've done a million active projects and a trillion predictions with our customers, a trillion. And I'm excited today to announce something that we're very proud of. So we have taken all this experience and we've really tried to give back and share it with the world. And so we have uh, a website, we have a podcast called More Intelligent Tomorrow. And it has many of the top thought leaders, many of whom we're gonna be bringing here to the kingdom. We have CEOs, policymakers, all talking about the future in this intelligence age that we're living in today. And we actually are launching here today, especially for Leap, a blog and some content on how AI helps me get fit. And you know, I know that this is a struggle for me. I, uh, I got my workout in this morning, but I'm traveling a lot. And so I, I love the idea of having AI keep me accountable to stay fit. And this is actually talking about using computer vision for just that. And we know that this is a big emphasis, that the kingdom is focused on increasing the average percentage of the population that exercises weekly from 14% to 40%, and we want to help. And there's lots of other resources online. You can scan the QR code there. And I have several other very exciting announcements. Uh, one that I'm personally really excited about is we just added uh, Dibanjen Saha, the global head of data analytics at Google, as our president and COO. And Dibanjen is going to be very, uh, he's already very excited about working with me to establish and grow our presence here in the kingdom. And I also really want to thank our, our partners uh, Riyadh Bank and Mr. Ziad, thank you so much for your partnership, for your vision around creating a global bank that is based here in the kingdom and AI driven. And our incredible, sorry, Mr. Mr. Adil, sorry, Mr. Adil uh, from Riyadh Bank, thank you so much for your partnership and uh, your vision, and, and Mr. Ziad at MIS and all of our friends there who are helping us to grow our presence throughout the kingdom, both in the public sector and private sector, and with our cloud instance here locally. And so we have actually a large team that's here today. We're very grateful and excited about our partnerships with Riyadh Bank and MIS and so many others, and for the opportunity to meet many of you here. Um, we will be in the buyer's lounge. There's a large team of us. Many of our top innovators and data scientists across the world are here right now. We'd love to talk to you. And you can also see us online at datarobot.com backslash leap or at Saudi Vision 2030 at datarobot.com. Thank you so much.